Hey, this is something a bit new. I've never done this before, but um, I've had a few people comment uh, recently on some of my drawing videos, just asking about the way that I approach drawing the figure and anatomy um, and the way that I just map out my figure work. And so I thought I'd do a little video which shows a little bit of my process of how I tend to go about it. Of course, with, with things like digital artwork and artwork in general, there's always going to be a million different approaches. Um, everybody has their own style, but this is just a very, very brief outline of how I tend to go about it. So I use a pretty old school method of, I've got a, Ray, a really old Raycom tablet, um, which isn't one of those draw on the screen itself tablets. It's a really old one. So I'm drawing on a pad and looking at the screen that you can see. Um, and it's just something I'm comfortable with really, that's the way I've done it for a while and I'm just a bit old school and a bit used to it. Um, so yeah, let's sort of dive in really. So I open up Photoshop, I tend to do most of my drawing in Photoshop, which again a lot of artists would say sacrilege because I should be using Illustrator, but I'm just not very technically minded and so I stick to what I'm used to. Um, so as I open up a new screen, I've got an A4 proportion here. Um, and I've added a new layer, which is something that you do at the top of Photoshop. Let me just, oh, I haven't recorded that section for the screen, but it's image. You can hopefully see it coming up here now. New layer, and there we go, layer two. I've already done that. If you can see on the right-hand side of here, I've got layer one. So the background is just set to white. So I keep that the line work is separate from my background. And usually I sketch on physical, um, paper with pencils and then I'll take a photo and input that photo into Photoshop and then draw over it. But for the purposes of this, which is just really rough, I'll sketch straight into Photoshop. Um, okay, so when I'm doing figures, really the key, I think, well, I'll say I had my inspiration from growing up reading comics, a lot of Jim Lee, who if you haven't seen his artwork, do check it out, Google Jim Lee artist. It is extraordinary. And I grew up really listening to, listening, watching his X-Men comics um, and just taking a look at that really. And that's, I think, he's been most of the single biggest inspiration, I would say, uh, for sort of doing the dynamic comic figures. So I tend to start with the head um, and I think of it as a sort of an egg shape, which uh, let's go front on. I'll do front on to start with. So I'll always start with the head you know, a loose pointy chin, eggy shape. And then for me, that starts to map out generally how big the rest of the body is going to be. If I think I'm probably going to take it down to approximately this point. So it's by no means real human proportions. It is always um, extreme and exaggerated, but that's comics for you. And then really the two most key points I would say, I mean, a lot of people might just do a stick figure, which would sort of outline a line there to outline the shoulders, the torso, Another line here to outline the hips, lines there for the legs, at the edge of each hip, line for the arms. And that might just give you a very basic standing position. I'm just going to undo those strokes. Um, and I think that's always good to have in the back of your mind when you're drawing to think about those things. But I tend to do things in triangles and oval shapes to get a first bash. So once that's my head, face on, the next thing, the, really the two most important points in drawing a figure in different positions are the rib cage, the upper torso and the hips, the pelvis. And whatever position they are in will determine really what the rest of your figure can do. I mean obviously arms can be held in different positions but the angling of the figure is usually to do with the hips, the rib cage and the pelvis. So I'm always thinking about those two things first. So if I want to do somebody fairly straight on, let's say I'm doing a walking e position, so maybe got one shoulder slightly raised above the other, um, and I tend to do these in inverted triangles. And if I'm not drawing them that way first, I'm, I'm always thinking about them in my mind. So I'm drawing around this imaginary triangular shapes. So if I think of, we'll do a woman. So let's start doing the top of the hip, the shoulder line there. That's basically your clavicle bones. And then I'm just going to triangle it out. Just mid her down to so her midriff there. And we think about the hips inverted doing the opposite and they could be on that angle you know it could basically swing around from that central point anywhere so if I undo those it could be that angle you know but there's and then 
that these are the little subtle changes that mean that the figure's in a different position. But I'm going to go with the angle I first drew. So let's say something like that. So that means basically your hip, the bones are joining the hip here and here, more or less. We've got our shoulder points. <clears throat> and if I wanted to do, let's just say she's going to be walking. So I'm going to have this leg coming a little bit in front of her, underneath her on an angle, and then the foot is basically another triangle there. And then this leg will be behind, the knee is slightly lower because the hip is lower, so we need to sort of, even though there's a bit of foreshortening to think about, so this leg is looking shorter than that one, still, so I think we would basically balance out and have the knees at a similar level. And then just tuck her foot behind her. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm just thinking about what's, where else we have to fill in, just structurally. Really, it's that simple to start with. It's your basic triangle shape to get your hip and your rib cage. The rib cage a bit like that sort of shape, and the hips obviously come around to be that sort of shape in reality. But the triangles map it out pretty well for us. So they are the first two points we always need to think about. So I'm going to put her. I'll do our arms straight down just to give an idea of how I'm going to marry up the lengths. So if we think when we've got our arm down to our side, our elbow is more or less at the top of our hip, just at the very top of the hip bone. So I'm just going to take it down to approximately that length. And in this one, because the shoulder is raised, therefore accordingly so is the arm. So there's a bit of a degree, angle degree here. And then just have her hands out like that. Again, fairly even length between the, this section here and that section there are fairly similar lengths. And then hands are the bane of my life and probably most artists, if they're good at hands, then kudos to them. <laughs> I'm terrible at them. <laughs> right, let's have a look. How's that going? So, floppy handed. But we can already see we've got the shape of the figure there and we've done that just through an egg, two triangles and sticks thinking about where the joints are and making sure our lengths are fairly consistent. This isn't actually that far off of a real person's proportions. Probably in, in certain comics, or the way I tend to draw, you might have even longer legs. So they might be a bit up to there, and then the foot coming down to that level. I'm just going to undo that. Have I undone that? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to start to join the dots a little bit. So if we think about where the neck is, the woman, so it's not too wide. And we slant gently over to that point, over to this point. And then we've got the chest, which is more or less in shape with my ribs there. And then all we're really doing is joining the rib cage. If you imagine that underneath this, let's say that's there. We're joining the rib cage to the hips because whatever position they are in independently, they're still got to be connected, and that's what gives us informs the rest of the shape. So here it, we're going to follow the line through and meet it here. And this is stretched out a bit longer because of the opposing angle. So it's a bit more like that. <clears throat> that's the bottom of the pelvis, and then let's make a relatively rounded, curvy. So we bring, see so on the leg muscles, the, uh, the up, this section of the leg is always the, the thicker section. If it's a standard leg, that's what this is. So we bring that, we're coming in towards the knee from a wider point. And then we have our knee more or less there. And then the outer calf little ankle bone and then our foot is sort of above us and semi foreshortened. We'll do it again. These are not, I mean I'm doing this really basically, really quickly, really simply. That's just a bit off so I'm just going to tidy this up a little. So with the shapes are not, they're not completely symmetrical legs so you've got 
the muscles are slightly lower on the inside as they are on the outside with the calf. So you always sort of come out a bit further on the top on the outside of the leg and then down and then slightly lower and then in towards the centre. But we're still essentially dealing with shapes that are that. Well, not that, but you know what I mean? That kind of a shape. And we'll add the leg on it. Think of a knee joint and move out again for the thighs. Okay, so let's bring this leg is going to come in slightly behind the other. And so we see the more of the knee from um, from a lower point. And then because this bit's tuck, going to tuck behind, we're going to kind of ignore that bit of line. I'm going to come in here and then have the foot much more raised so it looks like it's walking behind the other one. I think we can afford to bring this in a touch and accentuate the angle of the hips a bit by bringing it out at the top. Yeah, that's our loose walking position. And I don't actually want the arms in this position, so it was just, this was just more to show where I would have placed them. They've turned out a little bit long, actually. I think the wrists would be about there and there, so the hands are probably more like there and there. But I'm just going to rub those out. Okay, going to pull her hand on her hip, I think, and this one can be in a relatively similar position actually to what it was before. So, if we think about that, those trying to keep the length that we have there that we had for the upper arm, it's probably around about here, just above the top of the, the hip, and swinging it out. So then we can try and keep that length consistent. So let's put her elbow point there. And then rub out those lines. Back to the pencil. Forearm. And then her hands coming up a bit to rest on her hip. And I'm just not going to play with fingers and hand shapes. Because it will just go very badly unless I put a lot of time into it. Right, bring her in there. Oh, she needs this. Something like that. And then we don't want to do too strong shoulders. This one can be quite strong because it's raised. Um, this one's slightly more relaxed, so let's tuck it in there. Down. Again, that sort of length. We just have that quite chilled. Okay, so that's basically a, I don't know what just the basic idea of a female form. I think if this was a more comic-y than I, I reckon these lines would be more accentuated actually. So I've been thinking more about while I'm doing this just how to explain what it is that you know makes up the drawing rather than actually focusing on how the drawing is going to look. But there we go. So I'm just going to get rid of some of the internal scribbles so I can show you a bit more about what the inside is like. I don't know why but my rubber is not showing me its size at the moment. So I'm having to guess. They might go back in again because I might actually do the cavicle. Done too far. Yeah, that I'm going to redo that line. I'm not happy with that line. Made it even worse. Uh, 
Ah, you get the idea. Okay, so now we're thinking about, let's bring in, if we bring a line down from the neck to the center, more or less in line with the shoulders, bringing our clavicles in, really just, and then tucking the neck in slightly towards them really just helps give it a bit of elegance, I think. And then here, we're gonna depict the top, of the bottom of her Central ribs so that we can get the abdominals in slightly, a little curved wavy line. Pouch goes again. And let's bring a bit more shape to this. So she's in a cosy. Gonna redo that arm as well. Sorry, the more I'm looking at this, this isn't really the point of the video, but I'm just gonna be a bit fussy with what I've drawn now. Just bring her arms a bit more relaxed, just there. I think it was a little bit too potty. The hint of a musculature very gently. Obviously the level to which you depict musculature is all informed by what kind of character you're drawing. If it's a superhero, if it's just you know, what their physical stature is like. <clears throat> so that gives you a kind of idea. Let's just tuck in some of the top of the, sometimes showing the top mark of the knee indicates these muscles that sit there, just very gently indicating the muscle. Cool, I'm gonna come into the face now, so I'm zooming in a touch. Too much. Right, faces are fun, and this isn't gonna be that exact again, because just the, the you know, I haven't got that big of an area to draw in, so compared to the rest of the body, it's relatively small, so I can't do it too precisely. But we're more or less, just, I'm going to angle her off a bit. Chin there. So you just sort of, you've got this egg upside down and you just kind of angle it off the touch. So faces, they are pretty much as different as they are and as varied as they are, they, have, they more or less have rules that are always followed which you should keep in mind. So eyes, for example, a lot of people will draw eyes up here, you know, thinking they're at the top of the head. There's a misconception. They are exactly in the center of the head. So from the top to the bottom, central line, from the chin to the top, that is where the eyes sit. Then the nose, I would say, again, it depends, people have different neck noses, you know, but it more or less half divides that in half again, the lower portion, so the nose is more or less here. And then again, if you half that space between the nose and the bottom, that's more or less where the mouth is. Does that make sense? So you're halving the head, and then halving the gap between the lower half of the head for the bottom of the nose, then halving the gap again from the bottom of the nose to the chin for the center of the mouth. That's a good starting point for mapping out where your features are going to be. There tends, to, however wide the eye is, it just says there, there tends to be the gap of another eye's width in between them. Again, that changes, and that's just gone really wonky, so that didn't work at all, but that's the principle. And the, the inside of the eye is usually in line with the outside of the nostrils. So if we think of that line um, with that, that's too wide, that line. That's more or less where the inside of our eyes would be. So I'm just gonna keep that in mind as I map them in loosely. So again, we just want that line to sort of sit through the center of the eye. A bit of a sort of an almondy kind of a shape. And then again, I'm getting two symmetrical eyes for me is virtually impossible as I'm showing you. 
And a lot of the time, with no, well, when you draw a nose, if it, if it's cartoon and not a portrait, like a photorealistic portrait, sometimes you just allude to something and let the brain do the rest because it can just look a bit fussy if you do the whole thing. So just literally indicate shape and let the brain fill in the gaps. Um, sometimes what you don't draw is more as effective or even more effective as what you do. Um, so I tend to just let the focus more on the bottom of the nose. So you're getting the nostril curve there. And then just indicate the outside of the nostril. So this is super messy because it's actually really small and up close. <laughs> Um, and I'm doing a million different screen designs. And then just to, again, indicate the rise, one side of the nose. And that's usually enough, because you can sort of, then with the line of your eyebrow, you imagine that line running all the way through, and you try and line up the inside of the eyebrow, and that will do it. And then you follow the shape of the eye, and then that's the inside of the eye, so the eyebrow pair will probably start more about here, so you can thicken that section out there. Top, oh god, she's looking very angry. Okay, this isn't the prettiest face I've ever done in my life, <laughs> but um, it's I'm just talking at you, trying to think of what's going to be interesting to know. Eye mouths tend to line up with the scent with the irises, so more or less there, more or less there, and they are the edge of our mouths. And then I always quite like the top, quite a nice um, wide Christy Turlington lip. And um, probably if you don't know who Christy Turlington is, sorry. But have probably the most beautiful face on the planet, I think. Right, let's just say that's not oh, wrong. And it's not very good. But let's just say that's our face. But they're the general rules of proportion. So we're using this as our frame line. I know that's hard to tell now. I'm going to bring this in a bit, her eyes are a bit far from, uh, her head needs to just tuck in slightly. And ears, they usually run between, the top of the ear is in line with the eye, the bottom of the ear is in line with the nose, so they take up this gap. And of course, that's just assuming your head is dead face on. If it's raised or to the side or tilted, then you have to think of those lines accordingly. So if there's a head, for example, it's just a, if I'm on a sort of a three quarter, I'm just going to do more like an L shape and then round it off, raised up for the back of the head, uh, over there, and then tuck in for the neck. So then you've basically got your central face point here, and you're thinking about the curve of the face. So that's more or less halfway, and then we're curving back up again. You think about that. So that's your eye line, your nose line, and your mouth line. Shape. This is always slightly the, the eye that's receded, you know, further back is always slightly shorter because of the perspective. And then again, I just I don't do a whole nose, just indicate the nose really. One nostril is hidden, one nostril visible. So this is the shape of our button nose. And then But then you would think about the ear being from there to there. And then, well, we need to really ascertain where the jawline is first, actually. Let's just take the jaw, start cutting up around about here. So then, once that, if you imagine again the similarly curved line here, that's the space the ear would take. And ears are horrible things to draw again because just anatomically they've got all sorts of stuff going on. So I just tend to do the outside shape, the top, inside ridge, a little lip there, and then we to the bottom, and then maybe just another scribble in the centre, and that's good enough for people to sort of see it as an ear. Okay, but you get what I mean. So, on this one, there is are going to be from here, type in at the bottom, and there. Oh, so that's basically... And then hairline, <laughs> again, different on every person. 
but I sort of I think if you have the top of the head and the eye section like we did the nose before you're splitting this bit in half again it's probably around about there and so I would tend to let's just say she's got a hair swept back so I'd use that as the widow's peak section the lowest point and then come out and then start to frame the face on the side or if she's got her hair down you know, I used I always use that as my break, my starting off point. I remember when I was younger drawing faces, I could never, ever get two symmetrical looking eyes. So I used to cheat and just do one eye, and then cover the other eye with hair, <laughs> and it was just a stylistic cheat. I think people cottoned on. I had to actually start drawing two similar looking eyes. Yeah, so there we go. So this basically, I hope it's been interesting, but it gives an idea of how I approach figure work. So that's just front on, she looks like she's being stalked by some headless apparition there, so I'm going to get rid of that second head. Bye bye. And then I always just draw the figure and then I imagine whatever clothing she might have, I don't think about that until after I've got to this point at least. So let's say she's going to be in a dress. You know, sometimes you, you've got quite nice lines and shapes and it's a shame to cover them with um, clothing, <laughs> you know, like stuff that would, would, but, you know, so it goes. Let's say she's in a dress. I'm gonna put her in. Nice, just straight top, or whatever the real name, the proper name for that is. And then think about her movement. And it's obviously, this is, if you think of this as 3D, this section here is the most frontal section that the cloth will be leaning on and resting on. So it's from that point that it's all draping. And you think of it behind, maybe come up again, get there, whatever it is. But now I'm losing all of my legs, which I actually purpose of this wouldn't be beneficial but that gives another you know and then I'll just add any if it's a superhero oftentimes there'll be a cloak so just tuck that onto her drape it over and around the shoulders and then yeah I really enjoy fabric actually doing fabric it's quite fun easy to get very wrong actually, um, takes a bit of practice fabric. But yes, so there we go, that is uh, a little introduction into the way that I approach doing people. Um, I'll do a very quick version of a man, well, let's just back this eraser up big and hope it works, yeah there we go, okay. So for a man, let's do quite a muscular man. Again I'm going to start the head, have him up here, and you think much more bold in your shapes. So again, it's still not that different though. You're still thinking in the terms of triangles and ovals. But now we're just thinking a bit meatier. So if I imagine his neck is a bit bigger, so his, let's say his chest up here, um, it's slightly different because women have just a bit more of that taper there. And we are rounding him off a bit. So I actually think of like a chest plate And then again, the hips, around about there. And then it's about meeting the two. Here's his, I'm gonna start in the center and then meet them. So there's his rib cage and his ab line. It's probably got more, whatever they're called, going on. I'm going to come in quite wide from the lats. And then again, I'm going to actually just do legs like that and there. And sometimes I do do just straight lines to just inform the direction of legs because it's quite easy to make them look wonky. But it's, everything is 
Same principle, just exaggerated. Here and then if you that teardrop muscle that kind of comes onto the inside there, and then there's another one usually. So this would probably be a bit wider there, and then there's another here, and that sits like that. And again, you think about the, the chest and the shoulder muscles are uh, more or less run into one another, they sort of do that so if you think about when you raise your arm how your chest right you know sort of spreads out as well in this section here they kind of run into one another so they'll that will usually inform the chest shape what position you are and what your arms in but let's just I don't know let's just find in there on that biceps of the shoulder muscle overlaps slightly comes down in like a what shape's that Tricep, and then angular harsh forearms. That's too short. I think I've made his arms a bit too short for the rest of his proportions. This is the thing I've just, you tend to see it once you've done it, you know, and you can just tell if something looks off and not right with everything else, I mean, you need to do that work to adjust it. But basic clumpy fisty shape. And some tucking some of the muscle muscle there, that tucks in here and there. And then we have our basic it's very thin waisted. Let's just bring that down a bit, parking that there. Slightly so little bits. Yeah, those are very, very stiff superhero man. And again, the eye, the face. I'm going to have his head as if he's tucked down slightly. So I'm going to, you can't really tell in the head shape, but you can tell once you start to put the features in what angle the heads are. So I'm going to have, imagine them sort of more like that. Which, which if you imagine that the whole fed is, the head, the whole face is tucked in, then everything sort of lowers forward. So now that's our temple brow line. So then therefore the nose has got lower and then the mouth is probably either covered by the nose more so, like so this gap might be narrower. And then a nice strong aquiline jaw. And then the cheekbones kind of come in from there as well. And that helps to indicate what position the face is in. So we'll just make these weird scribbles eyebrows. And then because of his face is tucked down, the eyebrows are covering the top of his eye a bit more, so it's kind of very much connected. And we wouldn't see the nostrils as much because they're tucked lower. So it's just more the shape of the tip of the nose. Yeah, you get the idea. So now, now that I'm following this line at the top of the ear, because we've then... So you just think about it as a 3D model, really. Bring the neck in towards it's a little bit extreme and because again this is the top of the head but it's curved down so normally this section if he was directly straight on this would be up there but because he's looking down let's say his hairline's more like there oh, I think, do you know what I think this is starting to look a bit like a superman let's go with superman
again, hair is a nightmare for a lot of people. Similarly to what I was saying with the nose indicator, the brain does a lot of favours for you in the viewer. You know, they'll fill in gaps. If, if you're literally trying to draw every single hair, it's just going to look wrong. So you just sort of indicate loose shapes, show where the parting is. You know, at the front, around the face, maybe a few more of the more individual hairs and the rest of the brain will do for you. Oh, let's just go to full screen there, fit screen. Yeah, looks a bit weird. <laughs> but it's, okay. it's okay, the first of this. All right, let's hide these huge traps with a bit of a his cape and his neck, draped over the shoulders a little bit. I'm trying to think actually how Superman's cape goes to the front, because he's got obviously his symbol here. Good old chest plate. I, do you know what? I cannot remember offhand if it comes out there or not. Let's pretend it does. Um, it's blowing in the wind. We have to do to him, man, to colour him, give him some gloves, put his nice pants on, give him some boots, and his, his S, which is not an S, it's a symbol for something else, something like that. There we go, there's soupies, there's soups. Okay, I will leave it there. It's two very different nameplates, don't we? Oops. Cool. Well, I hope that was um, interesting for those who follow my artwork and enjoy my artwork. I really, really appreciate all of the, you know, any good comments and stuff that I get. It means a lot. Thank you. And this is thanks for bearing with me. It's probably a pretty boring commentary, but um, it's the first time I've ever done anything like this. So. But I enjoyed it. I think I'll do more. All right. Take care. Thanks very much.